Oh, if you've never heard about this game before, it's, um, yeah, it's going to be a transition. <laughs> um, wait, we must be a foot with zombies. Oh, okay. You got, you had me word for a second there that I named it wrong. I'm going to put a pinned message in chat so that people know what the hell I'm doing. Give me a second. Go ahead and pin that. There we go. So that anyone who jumps in knows what the hell's going on. Okay. There's no music on this screen. Yeah, so, I mean, I already had a Rain World stream today, um, but I play a lot of hard games. And um, just for the people who are here, um, a quick explanation on why this is, seems like a huge change of pace, um, as far as YouTube is concerned, is that I, as a gamer in like real life i play everything like crazy everything well hi dragonfish i hope you have a good night um i play like everything i i do really kind of just play any hard games right um and uh catalyst one of my friends just dropped me into this uh, a few days ago probably i think it was like tuesday or something like that and in that time, since Tuesday, since I've been playing this game, I've, I think I've played this for like 40 or 50 hours. It's insanely complex. It took me four or five hours to learn how to install it. Um, it took me uh, probably about eight or nine deaths across the course of two or three days to learn how to play. I watched four or five hours worth of tutorials. And I've only now gone to the point where I'm like, I feel like I'm comfortable jumping into the game and just playing. So I earlier today recorded some voiceover for an introduction to the game. Um, and now today I'm before I actually start recording the game properly, I have some other stuff I want to record um, that is for the sake of the voiceover. Um, because I want like background footage. So I'm not going to be loading into a new character right now. I'm going to be loading into some existing characters to see if we can find some stuff. We're just going to be fucking around. We're, we'll see if we can find some stuff um, to uh, to do. Pretty hard games I can recommend. Yeah, there's a suggestions channel, Mike, um, on the Discord. Feel free to jump over there and drop some suggestions. Um, uh, let me... I'm, I'm pulling up my script in the background here so I can see what all I need. Um, it's actually one of the reasons that I even mentioned, like, that's, I think my motto on YouTube is I play hard games so you don't have to. Um, one of my, um, one of my exes used to always love watching me play, uh, video games, but they didn't like playing hard games at all themselves. So, you know, that's kind of like something that inspired me to start YouTube. Yeah. Two streams in one day. This is a casual stream. This is not, this is just going to be, I'm, I'm going to be fucking around. Um, and uh, I, I need to get footage for something. So I figured since I'm going to be getting footage and I'll be sitting here recording anyways, I just stream and like... It, one of the things that I am going to be asking chat for is if people do actually are well, well willing to help me. Anyone who's not familiar with this game, 
as I'm messing around with stuff, if you can point out places where I am glossing over stuff and um, that helps me whenever I go back and edit and make this easier to watch, because the first couple episodes, I don't want to do a tutorial, but instead of doing a tutorial, I, I kind of wanted to do like a, as something comes up, I'll point it out. Like, I'm not going to tell people about the HP, because the HP is weird, but until I get hit. And then I'll quickly explain, well, this is, you know, I took this much damage to this limb, etc. Right? But give me a second. I need to review my script here. So, da -da -da. so I need some images of some zombies, um, probably some busted out buildings. Um, if I could catch at least one magical creature, that'd be good. Uh, and I need some uh, dinosaurs. No, no. Actually, knowing nothing about the game is what I need. Is because a lot of people who I watch my videos won't know a lot about the game. So telling me things that are hard to understand that I do on screen, um, like mentioning like, hey, you know, Arima, you didn't explain that well enough for me to understand what's happening. That that helps because I can make a note. I literally have a notepad next to me, and I can make a note um, that that's something that I need to keep in mind. I might not do a lot to solve it, but I, I, I need to keep it in mind. Oh, <laughs> Plodman, it sounds like you know you know uh, Cataclysm, if you're mentioning um, vehicle crafting. So I have some existing characters, and I think the character in Penargill here is going to be the one that I'm going to want to load into. Um, because, again, I'm not actually playing for realsies right now. I'm just gathering footage. Um, and uh, we're going to go see if we can get some images of some dinosaurs. Uh, I was really close to some dinosaurs. And this might murder me trying to get... <laughs> this is a really hard game. Trying to get pictures of dinosaurs is going to be really hard. It changes all the time. I'm also playing... Uh, you can check the Discord. I have a new Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead sub-channel on the Discord. Um, you can check there. Um, uh, I, I listed what mods I'm using. So... It's going to be very different than what even, like, as a person who's played it for a while would have expected. Okay, so let's go ahead and... What time of day is it? It is 5 a.m. in the morning. Okay. So I think there were some dinosaurs. Oh, man, this is going to be a long drive. This might be a very... There was a bunch of dinosaurs around here on the map. So we're going to head back there. Go ahead and take control of the vehicle. Um, and I'm going to need to, like, get music or something. Driving vehicles is hard. FYI. So if I crash... Yeah. <laughs> I literally said the words, if I crash, and I crash into something. Uh, that's... That's really accurate to the Cataclysm experience right there. Okay. Give me a second. I need to... I need to get... A wide enough area to turn this fucking it's i'm literally driving an rv so it's not actually full uh that's a zombie horse ignore that for a moment it's not actually full ashley there's actually like tile sets and everything um so like i'll 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 say pause but it's not actually pause um so like i have a tile set for me and my tile set actually changes so like hold on if i get up out of my car real quick um, so, like, I'm currently, uh, zombie horse. That's not good. Um, how far away is he? He is... Okay, uh, I'll show you guys later. Um, I need to... I need to drive out of here right now. So, can you guys see my mouse over there? Um... This tile set is, that's kind of hard to explain, is um, the tile set is part of the base game, but you have to activate it as part of the base game. Um, okay, so so a real quick explanation. This right here is how cars work. This right here is my speed, but since it's a turn-based game, I can adjust my speed up and down without moving. But as soon as I press 5, which is like the standstill button, to to, to uh, let time pass, I will move, attempt to move at that speed. So moving at 12 miles per hour, moving at 16 miles per hour. And then you'll see this little green marker here. That's where I'm aiming. 
I'm an I'm an elf on this character though, and my final character will be an elf as well, which means that um I don't have a driver's license, so I don't know how to drive. So every once in a while in the chat log down here, you'll notice that it'll say, let's see if I can bring it up any times. Um no, I didn't actually do it. Every once in a while, I will I will lose control of the vehicle because I don't know how to drive because I'm an elf. Um, but uh, we need to drive down the road here. Um, to get back. Okay, so we need to go all the way back here because I want to get some footage of some dinosaurs. Um, actually, that's a good point. I'm gonna go ahead and start recording just in case anything is useful. There we go. Giant cicada. Because I want to get a picture. So my goals today are to get some pictures of some dinosaurs. I need to get some footage of some zombies. Which is not something I'm going to be able to do on this character. Um, uh, I listed my mods over in the Discord card. If you if you want to jump over there and look at them. Um, so I want to get zombies, dinosaurs, and if possible, I'd like to get at least one magical creature for the footage for the for episode one tomorrow. And then if I manage to get all of that, I might start recording my episode one here as well. Ooh, I hit something. I'm going to need like some music or something. Because this game is pretty quiet. I'll probably end up using Rain World music. Ooh, what did I just run into? I just ran over a crow. <laughs> Hold on. If I slow down, then uh, I think they'll actually run away from me. Nope. Oh, it's okay. Sorry, sorry, crows. <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> I, just, I just murdered a murder of crows. Oh my god! Vehicle turning is very cursed. Yes, your whole vehicle just like breaks off into uh, different frames. Uh, it's 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 pretty rough. Uh yeah. So I came through this area before. This is an abandoned character because I messed up the world settings. Um. This was supposed to be a mega city, but instead, all of this, all of this is forest. But it's because I fucked up the game settings. No, it's, yeah, it's not lagging. It's, um, the only time, I, the only time the car moves is whenever I press five, because it is, in fact, turn-based. But if I go up to 16 miles per hour or eight, 20 miles per hour, then my car moves, like, more than a few frames at a time, right? But I also shouldn't be driving that fast because, I, as I've said, I don't have a driver's license. I don't know how to drive. So I'm probably going to avoid going over 16 unless... Yeah, there we go. Right at the bottom. You fumble with the RFE's controls. So I just did a whole bunch of moving and, and driving without actually controlling my character. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fortunately, um... I won't need to worry too much about that because the only reason I even picked up a car was because um, the world was kind of fucked. Um, I was stuck out in the middle of the wilderness. Ooh, Antisaurus. Are those hostile? They are not hostile. Okay, we can stop here. Let's uh, slow down. Level out. There we go. And we let's go pet some dinosaurs. We'll make a quit save real quick, just in case that these dinosaurs are secretly aggro. And, nope, wrong button. Uh, let go of controls. They're so pretty. Life finds a hey, dude, casually parts in the middle of the road. I mean, A, I don't have a license. B, there's there's no one else on the road. It's the apocalypse. I am an elf, so like maybe maybe they won't attack me. Can I pet you? There is an Antisaurus. Aw. They like me. They're so big they can't see me whenever they're Wow. Finding a dinosaur, man. Did I turn the car off? I think I automatically turned the car off. Um, no, I didn't turn off the car. <laughs> uh, it's fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. As long as it's not moving. It's not moving, right? No, it's not moving. Okay. Yeah, so if I... 
drop my Kukri. Like, like, my character is actually, like, my, my model actually updates and stuff like that, right? So... I don't have a sheath for my Kukri on this character, so I can't actually, like, sheath it. You know, whenever you have a driver's license, you automatically turn the car off. So, like, my human character that I played the first time, they automatically turn off the car every single time they get out. I think my elf just doesn't do it because he doesn't know what a car is. That's probably enough footage of dinosaurs for now. Let's see if we can find some more dinosaurs. Because now that I at least have some footage of some dinosaurs, we're going to see if we can find some more dangerous dinosaurs now. Because that'll be, that'll be pretty interesting. Um, where was that in the footage? That was minutes four. Just painting notes. Yeah, the game is like, I'm going to have to definitely play some music because the game is like dead quiet. I mean, it has a lot of sound effects. Um, and there is a music track as part of the sound pack that I use uh, but I hate the music in it so definitely going to have to find um, music for the majority of the video honestly like I'll probably go with some combination of Rain World and, and uh, Risk of Rain and maybe some Hollow Knight because those are all pretty safe to use on the internet I might have to ooh what's a Woodland White oh it's like on top of me what the fuck? A pale, stumbling, white-tailed deer. Rivulets of slime running down its neck. Its limbs twist and bend in unnatural haphazard directions. And yet it moves with an uncanny strength and speed. Thanks to the cataclysm, it has now turned the tables. What once was prey, it now preys on itself. Coyotes, wolves. So it's a zombie deer. What the fuck? Ash is 263, yeah. What is this game? This is Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. It is a... Ah! Ran over the deer. Yep. Very ran, very much ran over the... Oh, that's not good. That's a lot of... That's a lot of zombie deer. That's a lot of zombie deer. Um... Fuck it. I think we try and plow through them. I'm just gonna turn up my speed to, uh, to 20. And hope and pray. Okay, we got through. Checked the car real quick. So, uh, these red parts are damaged over here. You can see the damage meter. The damage meter is kind of a little hard to understand, to be honest. I, I don't super understand it myself. But basically, um, two pluses is flawless. And then it goes two lines. And then it got kind of like the lines go down and down and down. Right? So I'm actually not too bad. The, the car didn't actually take too much damage by running all over a bunch of fucking zombie deer. Ah, my my character uh, just turned incorrectly. There we go. Get back on the correct track here. Driving is not easy, guys. Like, not only is it not easy because my character is an elf and doesn't have a driver's license, but also because it's actually not easy. What is that? It is sand and webbing walls. There's probably some sort of like giant spiders in there or something like that. Probably go play some songs in the background of the stream. Um, Yeah, I actually think that uh, that's not a bad idea. Does anyone know how YouTube handles that stuff? Because like um, oh, I know how to do it. Hold on. I'll go to backing tracks. See, but the problem is, user, that um, if I play songs in the background of the stream, whenever 
this becomes a VOD, it's going to get, it's going to get, um, like, I don't care about the monetize, but it might get striked. And it would be a strike against my account. So I have to find, um, royalty-free songs to play. I'm just gonna play the Rain World OST in the background. The problem is that the music that I was planning on using is on my computer, not online, which means that it won't play through the stream. How loud is that? Can you guys hear it? Ooh, a horse. That's just like, I think that's a normal horse. Yeah, that's just a normal horse. Nice. And then there's something dead on the road there. Oh, no, it's actually just manure. Okay. How close are we? We're pretty close now. Slow down to get around this other car here. Let the sparrows get out of the way. Oh, thank goodness. It's, day it's, it's full daytime, so I should be able to be much better visibility now. I won't be looting any because um, um, this is a dead character in a dead world. Um, I'm doing this part right here purely for the sake of getting footage for... Um, my little intro thing to my video tomorrow. I want to like introduce Cataclysm to people. A Gargolosaurus. What the fuck is that? Uh, doesn't have a it doesn't have a a thing. We're going to ignore it then. Oh, that's a bandit. Oh, look at that. That's not good. He um he knocked some logs over the road. And he's sitting there with a. SIG training pistol, a SIG training pistol. Some logs over the road. Um, and there's apparently a Gargoylosaurus. Tightly armored four legged dinosaur. Rigid spiked tail. A beak and sturdy spikes along the sides. It looks like an Ankylosaurus, sort of. I don't know if I can ram him because uh he's sitting by these tree trunks, so I'm pretty sure the tree trunks will be um will definitely destroy me. My previous character turd was a uh was a post threshold raptor that started in an underground lab. That was a really hard start. <laughs> um but he was very mutated. He tripped and fell into a basement full of zombies and died. Really not joking, that's actually what happened. Um There's a lot of room on the other side here though. I think that's how I got past last time is driving over the other side. The problem is that this thing is in the way. That thing is a bit of a problem. Okay. I might... He's going to start shooting at me any moment now. Come on, can I sneak past? I hit something. He's shooting at the car now. Oh my god, I actually got away. Ooh, what are those? Those are brown and magenta sauropod juveniles. They have the same model, though, as the other sauropods I was looking at earlier, so I'm just going to ignore them. I want to see if I can see some zombie ones and get footage of some zombie ones. Ah! Boom. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fumble with the RV's controls again. Because, again... Uh, Ankylosaurus. Where is it? It's fighting an oversized crow. Okay, then. We'll leave We'll leave that guy to that. Dermatech. What is that? Colorful 
paras parasitoid wasp grown to the size of a dog with a huge ovipostor. Ovipostor? Extruding from her abdomen. She darts around in search of a suitable home for her many, many children. Creepy. Ah, oh, shit. That's... That's not good. It's in the car! Um... Do we just keep driving? I think I stopped. Look over the controls. And, uh... Wait, is the car still moving? Going two miles per hour. Um... Slow down. There we go. Where'd it go? Where is it? Still in the car there somewhere, I think. Okay, what we're going to do is we are going to drop the crew tree. Did it leave? It might have left. I think it went out the back, and then I drove away. Okay, we'll pit... Oops, I didn't mean to uh, do that. I accidentally just wielded my backpack. There we go. Wield the Kukri. Yeah, my... <laughs> part of my car is actually wood right now because it's been so fucked up. I could just walk into my car from the side. <laughs> yeah, I can literally just walk in. It... The door is for show. <laughs> but we'll close these doors just, I don't know, to make ourselves feel better. Engine fails to start. Please start. There we go. Let's say if it doesn't start up, we actually have some serious problems on our hands. I guess it doesn't matter too much if the character dies, because this is a uh, this is a character that we will be scrapping. up a bit here so this road runs along this river and water and sorry it runs between a river and a swamp and both rivers and swamps are both infamous for dinosaurs so we're hoping that we can find some zombie dinosaurs leopard frog what's that leopard frogs are named for the brown spots on their backs and lights although limited in size they too are voracious predators okay let's not fuck with them I kind of want to make a new CDDA run to either try a slug cat, um, a slug cat build. Yeah, I actually, um, at the end of my Rain World stream, I was thinking uh, someone mentioned making an iterator, and with Bionics and Psychics, uh, you actually really could make an iterator in this game and play as an iterator. I'm not gonna do that though. I kind of want this to be a little separate. I love Rain World, but I also love Cataclysm. Ooh, we need to slow down. I almost just plowed into that tree. You actually should slow down really fast. What is that? Some sort of solar car? Interesting. Decayed Pouncer. Normal looking cougar, except that it has hind legs are swollen, its eyes bulge with black goo. Yeah, that also sounds wholly not good. Got a rainbow stand on Minecraft? That's cool. I wish I had headlights still. I'll have to go off the road a little bit here to avoid hitting that car. For the record, if I if I hit anything solid at this speed, 
I will just die. Like this, a lot of this game is very, very simulated. Um, also, part of being an elf means that I have about 50%, I think it's 50%, less HP than most people. So I'm very fragile, which is why whenever we get to my actual character, you'll see that an ogre. Okay, that's cool. An enormous pale green beast known for living in swamps and eating survive, clutching a gigantic club in a single meaty hand. It will kill anything it gets its hands on. So we found Shrek. Uh, no, ramming speed is very ill-advised. Um, it is fleeing speed. If we ram him, he will... I'm in an aluminum modern car. It will do way more damage to the car than it will to me. Or than it will to him. We are still looking for dinosaurs. More dinosaurs, that is. What the fuck is that? Oh, it's a tree. <laughs> From that... Ooh. Stenonychosaurus. Small bipedal dinosaur covered with feathers. At the end of each foot is a large stick-like... Large sickle-like claw. Its eyes suggest intelligence. Interesting. Ah. Oh, here we go. Siat's zombie. Okay, we're going to stop, let go of the controls, and okay, so now that we're let go, it'll tell us hostile, can see our current location, and it's slower than us, which means that um, I can run away from it. That's the important part. And um, we're going to turn off safe mode and get out of the car. What the hell? What just happened? The Seat zombie pulls you in. As the Seat zombie like shot out some sort of like long claws and strong arms for grappling? Okay. Well then. Um, so I still want footage of this thing. So we're going to pull up our spell menu here. And uh, we are going to go to blank. Which makes us disappear and reappear nearby, getting rid of the grapple. This thing likely is too much for us to handle. We'll, and just in case, though, we will drop the Kukri, take a few steps back, pull up our menu again, go down to Magic Missile, aim, and it only did 22 damage. That barely moved its HP. For people keeping track on home, uh, I can't move my mouse because otherwise it'll move my mouse, but. Uh, the green bar is on the right side near its Seat's zombie. That's base. Imagine that like an HP bar. Hello, Josh Troll. Uh, no, this is not my first time. I've played about 60 hours, 40 hours of Cataclysm. It's my first week, though. Um, and we are just trying to do an casual stream because I will be making a YouTube series on this game um, in this coming week. And uh, just trying to gather some footage. We're, currently, we're trying to gather some uh, footage of uh, dinosaurs from Dino Mod um, so that I can use as part of an intro. I do want to see if I can kill this thing, though. So we'll, we're going to just spam some magic missiles in this thing. Okay, I'm actually doing some damage. I'm worried it's going to grab me again, though. And I'm also running out of mana very quickly. Come on. Ah! Uh, yes, I'll stop casting. It, Man, it's seriously like... See, it's only a zombie pulls you in. Yeah, it grabbed me from like three tiles away. That's crazy. Um, problem with this is I don't have a weapon now. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try blink again. It put me out in the water. It's not the worst thing in the world. Last of our mana. Come on, can we get it? Yes, there we go. What is that? All right, water scorpion. Unfortunately, some of the animals in this, uh, pack don't have, um, don't have tiles in the tile set that I'm using. So you will see some ASCII symbols every once in a while. Um, but it shouldn't be that common. I've tried to get as many as possible. One thing you'll see is that there's a little skull in the top left of this. It means that if I don't squash this, if I don't smash it, it will reanimate as another zombie. Um, there are some... Uh, uh, a Torvosaurus putrid dinosaur corpse with a large head, long, sharp teeth, oozing black eyes, and a long tail. An Issy, and a named zombie, frozen... Fury, a large, long neck, two-legged dinosaur corpse with a long tail. Its entire body bulges with distended muscles and swollen, festering wounds. 
I believe this will be I'm gonna skip this one. This will be the last fight of this character. It is a fitting end to a Tamerman to want zombies, find zombies, and and have a little bit more than they can handle. Oh wow, that's that uh that guy went down fast. We're gonna run back to our crew tree here. Pick it up. Which takes a little bit of time. And uh Hello, zombie friends. Unlike the dinosaurs from earlier, we're not going to be able to go up and pet these. Also, why is there a mink? There's just a mink just out there in the water swimming around. It won't matter, but we're going to go ahead and crush this, smashing this force, this, the wolverines. Yeah, the, the it's much slower than you is only because of its current condition. So like if I if I start so like my my move speed is or my move speed's right here, right? If I start running, then my move speed will increase. And now it'll say it's practically immobile. But that's just in comparison to me. And you can see a little um oops. You can see a little icon above me saying that I'm running. It's in the deep water, so I imagine it's actually probably quite fast. And we are actually going to let this thing come in. Is it not hostile? I'm pretty sure it's hostile. Yeah, it is hostile. Okay. I was going to say we're going to let it come in and fight me because I want to get some footage, but um, it's not wanting to what? It's not wanting to fight me for some reason. Are these guys zombies? No, they're not. I wonder if they're fighting each other. Corpse of a goose. They've been murdering some geese out here. Where was that uh, frozen fury? He is 22 to the east of me. So he's right out there. He's hostile. So let's go ahead and... We'll wait a few seconds. And see what happens. Man, yeah, they're, they're not wanting to come fight me. There's the corpse of one of the zombies over here. Just a, a bruised corpse of Allosaurus? Jesus Christ. These things butchered this thing to death. We're going to go ahead and crush that corpse as well, make sure it doesn't come back. It's just a good habit to be in, even though it won't matter for this particular encounter. I mean, I wanted to get some footage of, uh, fighting zombie dinosaurs, but, uh, I don't think they're going to be coming to me. Despite the fact that they can clearly see me, and some of them are even hostile, And that guy's definitely hostile. No. Yeah, see, if I wait out into the water, it's going to destroy a lot. I guess it doesn't matter. Oh. I sink like a rock. Okay. Apparently, I can't swim. I actually don't know how to swim. I've never swam, swam in this game. I assume there's probably a way. Can I, can I, like, go up? You try to surface, but you can't. Yeah, okay. That's scary. This man won't stand and fight me. This might be all we're going to get as far as zombie footage, unfortunately. Or uh, zombie dinosaur footage, as far as we're going to get. So, with that in mind, we're going to do something stupid. Mostly because I want to know what happens here. I have never driven a car into water before. So we're going to back up a bit. And we're going to try and ram that guy. Uh, what? Okay. Okay. So the RV sank, and then he slammed me. The frozen fury emerges from the fault flowing deep water and slammed me that far across all of the pavements. I took 155 damage. Almost every single one of my limbs and arms and torso was completely damaged. The wind was completely knocked out of me. And he almost killed me in a single hit. Hot damn. Zombie dinosaurs are no fucking joke, man. 
I, we, we can't kill this, but like we can try and spend the rest of our mana here. We can do uh, some more magic missiles. Um, why are you trying to target a fucking fish? We only have 500 mana left. Back up. Uh, okay, we'll pick up the true tree again. And here's, here's where we die. Grabs onto our torso, lashing tightly. And threw me again. Holy crap. I've never seen something throw anything that far before. Well, it threw me that far, so we're going to try and catch our breath. So we struggle to stand, catch our breath. We're down to our last few wounds. We are, in fact, committing suicide here. Bleeding, staggered off balance. We are a single elf with a two Kree fighting a dinosaur. And unsurprisingly, it murders the crap out of us. We're going to make a funny death message here. And yes, that is the, in fact, the official in-game death music. Because this game's fucking weird. And I love it. And in the last few moments of my life, the dinosaurs come over here and break all of my bones and eat my body. Okay, yeah. They lived up to uh, what I needed them to do, though. I got a bunch of footage of zombie uh, zombies and um, uh, zombie dinosaurs. Let me go ahead and go name that footage real quick because I'm going to lose track of shit if I don't. Sounds about right for a game like this? Yes. Definitely. Um, and I'm going to leave you guys with a BRB screen because my fiance just got home and I need to, yes, I will be jumping into a new game. I need footage of some destroyed cities and some zombies nest. Um, and then after I get all of that footage, I'm actually going to start recording my first episode. So you guys will be able to uh, stick around for that as well. Um, but I need to BRB for just two minutes. Okay, then. Let's get OBS back here. Okay. We're back. So, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the world that we're going to be actually playing in and copy all of its settings. Um, for people who actually know what the hell is going on, uh, on the right side here is all the mods that we're going to be using. Most of these are just part of, like, the base game. I've added Magicalism, Mind Over Matter, Dino, Mythical Martial Arts, um, and then some rebalancing mods that I just kind of like myself. And the uh, game world options are, for anyone who knows the game, kind of insane. Basically mega cities with a little bit of spacing in between them. Anyways, um, I'll rename that. And then we're going to go in with our Elven Archmage preset. Because I want the character to look um more or less the same consistent consistently so that I, whenever i get footage uh we can have that character in the background and uh we'll just do some random rain world music in the background again i 
I need to double check this character, make sure that uh, they have the right starting scenario. They don't have the right starting scenario, so that's good. But I want to do that kills the start here, though. Well, we'll go ahead and go through it real quick then. So no driver's license, no high school graduate because they're in freaking elf. They didn't go through go to high school. Um, we are going with beginner archery. Um, scrolling all the way down here to, um, where is it? Elf. So that gives us our species. And then we're giving ourselves photokinetic, which is kind of just like the absolute dead beginners of, of psychic powers. We're not going to be able to advance those psychic powers for a really, really long time, but it does give us a lot of really fun things to play with at the beginning of the game. And then we're also going to be taking a newly awakened um, teleporter um, as well, because I'm just a really huge fan of the the, uh, the psychic powers in this game. Going up to, uh, we'll go with nine intelligence ten, or ten intelligence nine. Get sorry, I don't remember what I set this to. I think I did this last time. Um, it whenever it's talking about uh, uh, lifestyle knowledge, uh, offense, and stuff like that. Um, it's comparing this to a normal generic human, for the record. So, uh, uh, realistically speaking, I am overpowered compared to, like, a generic human, but, uh, the part of the reason I'm making an overpowered character is because we want this to be a rather long series, and in my experience, every single one of my characters has been stronger than the character I'm making right now, and has died to very early game things. So, don't worry too much about it. We had... Good memory. We had, um, I think it was a, yeah, we had reading. That's what it was. Um, which gives us, would locks us into some stuff. And then, uh, introvert. Basically I'm choosing traits based off of a character decision, not necessarily choosing traits off of, um, gameplay decision. And I'll go into more about the character whenever you guys actually watch the video. You guys don't have to worry too much about that. So we're going to go ahead and save this and say YouTube Elven page. And then start up a world. Okay. So this still gives us the same kind of style and look. We can go ahead and cast uh, Candles Glow here um, and fail terribly. Try again. There we go. So we have the same general look as our other character. We do have a cloak on. The other character had a cloak, but um, we left it behind. And we're not going to worry about the books or any of the normal prep stuff here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn that light off because we have elven eyes, which means we can see in the dark, sort of. So our dark vision is actually going to be a lot better here. Um, oh, wow. That's a that's a really good start. I'm just going to pick that up for later. Um, let me think. Do I need anything? I don't think I actually need anything in order to get the footage I want because we want to get some footage of some broken out buildings hello soundtrack we want to get some footage of some broken out buildings and of some zombies kind of just sneak up here we got some zombies to the south turn off safe mode Let's open this window and slide out the north here Perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. So we can go ahead and drop our quarterstaff, and we can climb this downspout, this drain spout, which gets us on top of the building here. Let's just take a look around, and you can just see all of the zombies and broken buildings and destroyed area. And then we get one far farther out. So you can kind of look at the map around us. We're at the edge of uh, apparently a place called Freetown. This is not a mega city, but it might be the absolute edge of a mega city, possibly to the southwest here. I actually did the gateway background in one of my earlier uh, runs, Josh. I did it as a. I actually played one of my earlier runs of this game, kind of like a Tarkov um, extraction shooter. I had a safe base, and then I would go explore, and then I would gate back at the end of each day. And I do like it a lot, but I'm going for a very specific kind of like pseudo roleplayed character, and gateway's a little too strong. Um, for what I want to do. 
Um, I do want to get to Gateway, but it will require me to get like the black crystals and stuff like that in order to be able to train well enough to get to Gateway. We kind of look around on the map here in the top right corner up here. You can see each of the things that I'm examining. And it looks like we got a hardware store, sporting goods, a small dump, a circle of stones. That's from some, some sort of magicalism, magical thing, craft shop, clothing store. And each of these are indicating places where my character has seen hordes and hordes, hordes of zombies on the street. This world is very destroyed, very gone. Oh, we even have a zapper zombie down below us. Trying to get up to us. They're tra tracing us on the ledge. Probably trying to grasp at us, trying to get us off. What we're going to do is we are going to run back to this downspout. And climb back down, scampering down the downspout, grabbing our quarterstaff at the last minute. Ignoring every distraction because we need our quarterstaff. Yeah, I do know about the uh, the wizard house basements um, thing. I'm just not worrying about it right now because I'm trying to gather footage. Thank you, though. And we're going to try and get around here. Got one zombie coming in towards us. We'll go and take this guy out. I'd like to get a screen of just like a huge amount of zombies if possible. Uh, I'll run away from that guy for a second. Let me staunch our wounds. Um, what was I trying to? The game was trying to cast mana. My I, my uh, my game changed my keybinds on me, or at least I forgot to change the keybinds back. There we go. So now magic missiles and F. Run away again. Send more magic missiles down range. I refuse to die until I get my footage. There we go. How many zombies are out here with me? Only this one left. Shit. He got caught up to me. We're going to try and run a circle around them and get back to our staff. Oops. Uh... Put those back on. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna come out in droves if we start to run down the street here, which will be perfect. For what we need. I'll stop here. Move my mouse out of the way. It's taking me four minutes to just do these um, footage moments. Possible, I'd like to find an even larger congestion of, of zombies, but uh, uh, I don't think it's going to happen because I'm pretty sure we're going to die here. For the record, if you didn't know, this is ill-advised. Don't do this. This is how you die. Because in the top right there, that's my stamina. And most of these guys, if you'll see, are faster than me. Faster than me. Faster than me. Because I'm exhausted. And I can't run anymore. That brainless zombie is amazing. That's a great thing. Which means they will catch up. There's a feral mechanic in the distance? What's that? Z9? <laughs> that's a zombie dog. Some feral elves. The elves unfortunately don't have tile sets, um, so they just show up as E's. A feral mechanic. A wild human-like creature was probably a mechanic before the cataclysm. You can see it by his worker uniform, or his blood-covered hammer in hand, or by his all-hating view. That's funny. 
There's just so many zombies on the street. And this is one of the things that you'll get whenever you do the the city start. Is you'll just get so many zombies. And the beginning of our run is going to be so... We're going to have to be so careful. Because it's going to be very easy to just die. Yeah. This zapper is going to catch up to me. That little symbol to the right there means that I've been grabbed. Means I can't run anymore. And they're just going to tear me to shreds. Yep. That makes two. For the record, I actually can't even disable that music. And then they tear me to shreds afterwards. Fresh meat. Okay. Let me go check my documents, see if there's anything else I need. So... I got strange creatures. I got, uh... Zombies. Destroyed the city. I think I could probably work with that footage. I don't really need anything else. So, I am actually going to go ahead and... I apologize for the for the viewability of watching this on stream but um uh I am going to have to not play music in the background for the sake of recordings here uh just because if I play music in the background then it's going to make it a lot harder to edit stuff out later uh so I am going to start up my actual character now though um so we're going to grab YouTube Elven Archmage. And then load it into Ryland. Just the world that I've kind of already curated to be a decent world for a start. Hopefully this works correctly. So we have... I think we have everything. Yeah. We have the right profession. Yes. And our name... Is Vellum. Just so that you guys here who are in the stream and watching this initial thing have an idea of what's going on, I will go ahead and read to you a little bit of my voiceover. So basically, um, our protagonist is Velen. He is an elf who always dreamed of being an archmage, part of a society who has kept the traditions of magic alive despite the technology of modern times. He sought out a teacher in one of the human megacities with a promise of starting the road to being an academy magus. After only a few months of basic learning, enough to pick up the raw essentials, the world ended. Earlier today, his teacher went out to the other room to find a way out of this mess and hasn't returned, seemingly vanished from the basement. You can hear clawing, screaming, and the breaking of walls and glass outside, and now he must learn to survive. However, that dream of being an archmage still burns inside him, and maybe some of these spells he's picked up along the way will be useful. As long as this works, it looks like it did, we'll get started. So welcome to Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead. We have Vellum here in the center here, and we start in, a, start in a dark basement. Fortunately, we have along the left side here a book, a series of bookcases filled with books that will most likely be useful. In the top right corner here, we have a staircase, which will be our primary exit from this basement. Coat rack, some chairs and such, and a strange scribbling on the wall. An inscription, a circle of esoteric symbols etched into the metal wall. They draw your eye to their otherworldly shapes. This is a tr classic roguelike. So we have turn-based movement. Nothing in this world will move until we're ready to move. But we're going to go ahead and head to the other room here. Opening up this door, and you'll see our little sight cones here. Um... The reason that everything's dark here is that it's pitch black. The sepia is things that we have seen before but are outside of our vision. And then this gray is the fog of war of what we have never seen. 
I don't check the other room here. It looks like we got a TV, a smart a smartphone sitting on the TV. We're actually going to go ahead and pick up that smartphone here, grabbing it, adding it to our inventory. The smartphone will help us. Um, it's a popular fancy smart smartphone capable of taking photos, an integrated camera, and even illuminating the area. One of the best things, though, is that it helps us track consumed calories. So we're going to go ahead and um, activate that, and we'll check our tr calorie tracker. We only we consumed zero calories today and zero yesterday. But the nice thing about that is that whenever we do have food to eat, that'll help us keep track of our calories between days and keep healthy. Looks like over here we have some more bookshelves, some more books that we'll take a better track of in a moment. But we want to just take a good look at our surroundings. And here we got a nice little bathroom with actually some pretty good supplies. We're going to go ahead and take some of this. We'll take the... Ba uh, bandages, and um, we'll leave the rest for later because we'll be back here. In the distance, you hear, this is the end. But we're going to ignore it for now. Someone's screaming above us. We don't know what's going on on the surface yet, but it can't be good. We're going to take the office scissors, tuck them into our backpack. Or, correction, we don't have a backpack yet. We're going to tuck, tuck them into our uh, dress shirt and dress camo. We have this nice Academy Magus look going for us. We were all always a little bit of a nerd, so now, you know, being a mage really justifies. We do find a small mana crystal left behind by our master on the ground. Some water still in the toilet. Perhaps that'll become useful later. Or we'll close doors behind us as we go. And there seems to be photo here. It's a photo of a jovial old wizard. He seems to be dancing with a coat rack in the basement. A stack of suitcases in the background. Interesting. So there's no suitcases here. But I do believe that there's a coat rack here. Yes, it's a coat rack with a bathrobe and a full-faced uh, motorcycle helmet. I don't seem to be able to interact with it, but maybe if we grab it, pull it out of the way, nothing happened. But as we step onto the place where it was before, we see your surroundings shift. So something's changed in the room. Something around here. These scrawlings of symbols behind his, what now is a bead curtain. Always had secrets, I guess he did. He has some sort of weird scorecard in here. Almost like he was like watching TV here. And a secret study. In the background, we see a corpse of a human. I guess that explains where he went. And a book on geospatial systems. A translocator gate. A gate for translocation. Cast the translocation spell or use a translocator to choose this gate as destination. That's unfortunate. Well, I guess nothing to do about that now. We'll have to leave the book for now because we don't really have any room. Check his shelves. He has a lesser mana potion. Another uh, uh, mana crystal. That's going to be really useful. And some books. That scroll of Hardened Earth is going to be pretty good as well. And then on his desk, he has a Reign of Perception plus two. I mean, yeah, we'll go ahead and put that on right away. Goes on our left finger, and we can go to our character sheet here. In the top left, you'll see our, our starting stats, and our perception went from the, the actual of nine up to 12, which is going to make us much better at seeing things, and it's also going to make us much better at shooting at things um, from a distance. We also have, what are these? blood power generators using the latest advancement in technology this bionic is able to convert the innate energy stored in blood into bionic power the stronger the blood the better and hold up to 100 milliliters of blood okay i guess that's some sort of bionic also a book of a book of alpha male quarterly that's funny well We'll leave this for now. Close the bead curtain. And we are going to... Tentatively. We've been hearing wumps and thunks from above us. Out in the distance. Crashes. Chaos of the city above. We are going to tentatively check up the stairs. Immediately, we see a zombie in the distance. A human body swaying as it moves an unstoppable rage visible in its oily black eyes does he see us he sees us and he's hostile he's standing over the corpse of something freshly slain when you see that our window over top of our staircase here is broken out 
We only can get a glimpse of the building around us before we need to duck back down into cover, escaping from what is definitely some hostile intentions. Wait here in a moment, catching our breath, ignoring the sounds above us. We're going to peek back out, see where he's gotten to. Looks like, despite the fact that he can see us, he isn't coming for us. So we're going to go ahead and crouch, and you can see the little symbol over my head that crouching. Hopefully get a reduced vision on some of these things. Take a look around. We do see that there's another house over there. More zombies. Go ahead and close that door so that they can't see us. And a bathroom. And here we'll take a quick respite. See about, um... Our main here, our main concern here is day one needs. Today... We need shelter, but that can probably be accommodated by the basement, at least for the time being. But our master lived in a, a series of buildings, um, a, a small neighborhood with basements all around. We're not going to get any peace and quiet here. We'll eventually need to move. Um, the secondary need we, we have is water, and then the third is food. So hopefully we're going to be able to find what we need around here. We can check these things. Um, I'm actually going... Yeah, any any bandages we find, we are going to take with us. And uh, we want at least one of these bottles of antiseptic here, which goes into our uh, pockets again. Um, because if something bites us, it could leave a very potentially infected wound. And that could be the end of us very, very quickly. And I'll peek through the curtains here, see what we see. Doesn't look like there's any zombies in the in the background or in the in the backyard. However, I do see something highly valuable. A brazier. A ma raised metal disc in which to safely burn things. That will be incredible. A brazier will allow us to have a contained fire for day one. That will help us solve some of our water needs. Now we just need something to transport water. Preferably something metal, but if not, we can just use a bunch of bottles and start like cooking water. We also need something to cook the water in, like a pot or a pan. The brazier will have to be something we save for later. Okay, we're going to crouch again. Close that door behind us. Make sure nothing gets in there. And move carefully through the house. Zombie dog. It's pretty far away. Doesn't see us. We're going to move into the darkness here. This area here is, in fact, very dark. So it, sh it should only have a few tiles of vision. Like about this-ish around itself. So if it gets within that range of us... Oh, wow. A hiking backpack at the beginning of the game. I promise, guys, I didn't see this or anything like that. That is an amazing find at the beginning of the game. That is going to be absolutely incredible. Okay, let's see if we can, realistically speaking, the person, the, the, the careful person inside of me wants to say that, uh, nothing in the cool bots, damn, wants to say that uh, we should go back into the basements and we should just wait until night. These things don't be able to, can't seem to be able to see very well, not very long distances. So that would be the safe thing to do. Northwest, you hear crunch. That's not good. Something's banging on the wall of our house. Probably heard us moving around. Jean jacket here. There's a kitchen. We can get to the kitchen. In the south and below you here. Fuck do you want from me? Sounds like... Oh shit! That dog found us. Okay, we stand up. Swing the quarter staff. We got a hit with 14 damage. It missed us. Another hit. Swinging. Missing wildly. And we crunch it down. This little skull above it. It's indicating that this thing will get up, reanimated by whatever dark forces has claimed the world. So we're going to crush it to bits, ignoring the footsteps we hear outside. From the north, we hear footsteps. Close. Not close enough, though. Crash back down again so that you can't see out the windows. And we're going to check the fridge. I am an elf, so that does mean that uh, stuff like horseradish and unfertilized eggs and butter, they don't appeal to me. But the eggs will be useful. 
So we're going to go ahead and take them. We can make meals out of them. Same thing with the fruit jam and the pickles. Lunch meat, cheese. Now that we have this hiking backpack, we can be a little bit greedier about what we take. I was originally planning on coming up here and just grabbing the bare essentials. We'll grab the bottle opener. We'll need it eventually. And uh, that's all I'm going to grab. For Actually, I'm going to grab these forks as well. I think I've heard before that you can make uh, you can make lot picks out of them. A cast iron frying pot. We'll grab one of those. Some butter knives, cotton patches. I think I might grab one of these gallon jugs. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to take the gallon jug of ammonia. Where is it? There. Ignore everything again and pour it out onto the ground. Now we have an empty gallon jug. We can fill that with water. And we can start trying to boil some of that water with that pot we found. I think I see some matches. Ooh, and a candle. Very good, very good. Flashlight. Uh, a hammer, just one of them. Some batteries. The lawn strings might be useful for crafting. I'm not sure. A mini lighter and a matchbook. Can't have too much fire. We'll take it all. Ooh, some pliers. And uh, we'll take an Enzacto knife. Oh, and a screwdriver. Yeah. I just wanted one screwdriver, please. Thank you. There we go. I think that's all that's useful here. We can always come back for more of it. I just want enough so that we can get through our first few days here. We don't really want to be moving around this place during the day whenever possible. Check this last cupboard. Looks like a whole bunch of coffee. Wow, that's a lot of coffee and, and tea. Um, some forced honey and some spoons and some thyme. Not much to, to speak of, but... Ah! Uh -huh. well, now we've just spotted something new. A plastic golem. Traditionally, making a golem is a months-long process involving hand tools and precision craftsmanship. A stone golem is as much of a work of art as it is a magical device. The advent of 3D printing has made it easy to get into the golem-making hobby. And plastic go golems have soared in, I assume, that's going to be popularity. That's not... Good. It is hostile and faster than us, and it can see us. Fortunately, our magic teaching tells us a little bit about golems. So we're not going to move, and we're going to examine our surroundings, because we know something about golems that the average person wouldn't. Golems are big, and they have an order. They are not to break windows. They're not to bust down walls. They're not brutes like zombies are. In fact, that golem is a life scent. It will regenerate, and it will likely take out a lot of the zombies in the area for us. But there is a caveat. They will walk through doors and come crush us. So we're going to look around. So our front door is closed. That's a window. It can't fit through the window. And our back door is closed. So we need to check this room and make sure there isn't a way into this house, because if there is, that golem can come in and crush us to bits. So we're going to move very quickly. Back here. Check back here. There's an open window. I'm going to go ahead and close it. Close the curtains over here. Of course, be a pack rat. Oh, blanket. We're going to pick up the blanket. <laughs> be a pack rat real quick. Double check this area. And then we'll close the door behind us. Is that book very useful? No, it's not. Are these books any useful? No, they're just entertainment. And we'll close the curtains in here as well. Okay. So now that threat, that golem... Has essentially been converted into a very powerful, te although temporary, ally. He is going to go around murdering the countryside, destroying every zombie he comes across, and basically beating up anything he comes he comes across. With the caveat of being, if we leave our house here, we're going to be in trouble. And we do have a general idea of what the nearby city looks like, and we are surrounded by a neighborhood, a massive neighborhood. There must have been thousands of people living here. And now they're all zombies. So we need to get out of here. Um, we need to find some place to move to that is going to be farther away from all of the threats. Or is going to be tall enough or deep enough that we're going to be safe enough from the zombies that they won't hear us whenever we're doing our crafting and our making of food and stuff like that. Just be a, basically a, a short-term home base. Um, so we're going to look around the map real quick. And just get our bearings before we go back into our basement. So, Northwest... <laughs> okay, well, that's where the golem came from. 
Okay, that's, so that's both a good thing and a bad thing. In the top right corner, you'll see that it says Wizard Tower. So this building directly to the north of us is a Wizard Tower. That means that that thing is going to be pouring golems, both stone, plastic, clay, all sorts of golems. It's going to be pouring golems out of it. The natural defenders of the Wizard Tower that the Wizard, the Grand Archmage, would have left behind. And it almost makes sense that we live so close to one. Our uh, master having taught us in the basement of only one building over from the wizard. I imagine this wizard probably could have been a potential tutor for us even. But that's going to be more than we can handle on day one. So we're going to look around at some of the other colored buildings here. What is this off in the distance? Another wizard tower. You know what? I'm going to start marking these. So we're going to go in here and we're going to make a note. We're going to make it red. Make it a giant W and say wizard tower. So that'll put a giant red W on that. And we'll do the same over here. So we'll go red. Having two wizard towers so close is really valuable, though. Once we get the ability to clear these out um, and we get some our, our feet underneath of us, essentially, we can go over there to get books and scrolls and learn more magic. That's going to be a massive key to our success and a key to our future. Because again, we have this dream of becoming an archmage and that dream still burns bright in the back of our head. So we definitely want to try and See if we can find enough spells to make our survival in this world much easier. What's like then other than just these gray houses, which all of these gray things are houses here. Um, we do have a craft shop. That could be a lot of different things from my experience. Crafts could be everything from like blowing glass all the way down to like whittling wood. Um, we have a coffee shop. There's a chance we could get some food and drinks there. A subway station. That seems dangerous. I don't know what lurks in the subways, but there can't be anything good. Then all the way down here, we have an apartment tower. We might be able to climb that in order to get a look on uh, surroundings. Some botanical gardens, a music venue. Uh, nothing nothing amazing, but we do have a insight into down, uh, downtown of the mega city here. Looks like if we head farther that way, we're getting farther away from the... Uh, the urban buildings and we get to like these dense urban buildings office towers and stuff like that in this downtown riverside area this area is going to be incredibly dangerous but if you look at all of these colored buildings here there's just going to be so many potential opportunities here we probably want to try and move towards it but maybe stay far enough away that uh we're not just heading headfirst into danger is that a library a police station a police station that's that has some possibility. There's probably some defensible walls in there. I'm just guessing. I've actually never checked out a police station before. There's probably some defensible walls in there. Might be a basement. Might be a second or third floor. If we needed up to a third floor, that would actually be amazing because it would mean that we're far enough away from the zombies that they won't hear us as we're doing our day-to-day -day crafting. That might be an early goal for us. Once we get some basic food and ba some basic water sorted, We'll try and wait till night, and we might go and scope out that police station. But for now, like I said, basic food and water. We're going to uh, peek through again, check to make sure there's nothing back there. Doesn't look like there is. So what we're going to do is we're open open the curtains. Uh, open the curtains. Stand up. Accidentally running. And we're going to try and sneak back into the backyard quietly as we can. We hear thwack. It sounded like it was close by. I don't see any noise indicators. Okay, we're going to crouch again. Go through the backyard here. Oh, there it is. Something trying to bust down the door. So we need to be quick. So we're going to take this brazier, take it down, pick it up. Brazier, not brazier. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're just going to run now and get back inside. Close the curtains. We're going to check. Here's footsteps. Could be anything. This place is so chaotic right now. It looks like nothing saw us. Good. So as long as nothing sees us now, this window's a problem. Being broken out like this. Go back down into the basement and... Uh, I don't feel safe here. The stairs being so close. We're going to go ahead and peek back up here. The stairs being so close to this window here and the possibility that a zombie walks in and then immediately walks down these stairs. 
means that we definitely want to set up in this back area. As far back as we can. Probably not all the way into the bathroom, but at least here. Which means that um, we'll have enough room, potentially, to spread out. So give me a moment here, and I am going to set up everything we've got and kind of get sorted. So we'll go ahead and deploy the brazier. Get it on the ground. And then... I am going to sort... <laughs> From south and below you hear hysterical laughter that's not good Go to busy work sorting everything out ignore the distractions so now we have all of our books in one spot we do actually have a chess set over here in fact we'll go ahead and gr grab the chess set and put it on our table over oop that's our quarter stuff where's the chess set our table over here so we have something to play with whenever we want to uh kind of we're trying to remember the old world we're just going to start a pile of everything useful with this copper wire these forks strings all of this stuff over here again just ignore the distractions it'll be fine and then everything else we're going to just drop and we'll sort it out how did i not drop some of that wire that's weird um what do we need to keep on us we need to keep our medicine on us We'll drop all of our food except for one thing. Keep our smartphone and our generally our tools on us. We don't need the pliers though. That's for like more advanced crafting. Same thing with the scissors. It's more for more advanced crafting. We definitely don't need the cast iron pan. But the rest of those things are pretty useful to keep on us just in case we get stuck somewhere. Ignore the distractions. Sort it out again real quick. There we go. And, uh, I'm an elf. I'm a member of high society. I don't want to be crafting, sitting on the ground, like some sort of commoner. So we're going to come into the other room here. And we're going to grab this table and shove it into the next room. Put it over here in the corner. And we'll use this as a place in order to, uh, craft things in the future. Lastly, we are going to make a nice little firewood spot. Um, actually, I need to put it here, don't I? 
Yeah. Firewood spot. Go ahead and grab the things that got left there. Now all we need to do is actually get some firewood going. So we'll go ahead and uh, light up one of our magical spells. Which we failed because we uh, have something in our hands. We'll drop our quarterstaff. Try again. Why the fuck are you doing this to me? You here. We're going to have to deal with that eventually. With that much loud noise happening nearby, we're not going to be able to sleep. But for now, we're going to take apart these bookshelves. So that we can get some wood. Um, I'm going to use my psychic field of, or no, not the field of light. I'm going to use the psychic uh, candle glow instead, which puts a temporary glow, and I can concentrate on this. Um, and uh, let's see. Just do a little bit more here. And then we're going to haul all of this. Ignoring the shouts and pleas of those above us as we do it onto our wood spot. And then finally, we have fire. We have fire, which means and we can go into our craft menu, go over to food, and wait, we're missing something. Clean water. We have a tool of boiling. We have a nearby fire. Oh, we're missing the obvious thing. Water. So that's why we cleaned out a gallon jug earlier. Let's see if we can figure out where it went. We have a gallon jug here. I'm going into the bathroom. And we can pour all of the awful toilet water into this gallon jug. The only problem, then, is that um, we're going to need something to store that in. Hmm. I don't think it'll let me make all 15 water and then put it back into the same jug. Because the problem is, is that our cast iron frying pan, although it's going to be able to boil water, it's not a terribly efficient way of doing it. I find, ideally, we're going to want to find a pot at some point. So that means that I'm going to go ahead and extinguish this fire. And as unfortunate as it is, we are going to pick up our staff again. Our copper wand. Copper circlet rubs uncomfortably against our throat. Yeah, it looks like we're wearing a uh, copper circlet that is not very good for us. We're, we're going to have to keep an eye on that. We want that. It helps us regenerate our mana, but it is a do you see it? A zombie came in here. They must have heard us deconstructing the the bookshelves. We have magic. A magic missile. Or even a mana bolt. And we could easily take it down. But if we were to use one of those, the cackling sound of the magic missile would surely draw more zombies. We're going to have to be brave. And we're going to have to go into melee with it. Our fragile elf bones... This is not going to go well. It looks like it's slightly hurt already. You can see on the right side. Those three bars. Indicating that it's only about three out of five. It's total health. Looks like it's already been beaten up 
roughened up by something. Take one hit. Oh, good. A good immediate 14 whack. Again, a critical. Another hit. And it does actually manage to bite our arm. That's not good. We just keep going. Okay, we got it down. Wasn't too loud. Doesn't have anything for us. How rude. Wait. Was that our master? Our master came back. Damn. In the end, we had to take down our master. But it wasn't one of those happy versions of taking down our master and looting his stuff, you know, like... We better we became better than him. No. He came back and tried to kill us. Rogo had dragged him back into his room. Ignore the shouting again. Continue ignoring the shouting. That's gonna be a problem. And uh close. Oh, he destroyed the bead curtain coming out. Damn. We can't even close him in there. It's a sad day when you have to destroy your own master, but uh we have a more immediate concerns. We need to get back up here. Crash down again. Let's see if we can find something else to store water in. Some bottles, perhaps? Not sure what we have available here. We can find another gallon jug. That would be about perfect. Carefully move through the house. Keep to the shadows as much as possible. The kitchen is fully bright. But if we didn't get to those windows, we can close them this time. Did anything see us? I don't think so. I don't see anything over there. Okay. We aren't safe, but we're better. Um, There's a bowl here. Hey, that's actually pretty useful. Now that we have a backpack, I feel like I, I, I've turned into a full loot hobo now, knowing that we can kind of just grab whatever we want. A teapot? It's smaller volume than what we have already. Um, let's see. I don't see anything super useful there. I'm looking for more large containers. Like the gallon jugs. Let's see. There we go, another gallon jug. This one of uh, ammonia. We're going to go ahead once again, pour that out. Just ignore the distractions. We'll keep ignoring everything until we actually see a zombie on top of us. There's not much else we can do. We have priorities. We have to get food. We have to get water. Or else we're not going to survive long enough for a zombie to kill us anyway. Obviously, you heard crash. How close was that? Not close enough to batter. Nothing saw us. Let's go back downstairs. Get back into our area. We're going to go ahead and turn the light back on. Just ignore the sounds. They're just going to keep coming. Okay. Now we can make clean water. And we're going to make a bulk 15 right away. Put our uh, quarter staff on the ground. Okay. That is step one. So we have shelter and we have clean water. go ahead and drink some of that water now. Mm -hmm. Block. Hungry. That's not good either. Something's talking southeast of us. And below us? That's not good either. Okay. So our next priority is food. We have some food. We have some fruit jam, some milk, some cheese. Can we make anything out of that? We can make scrambled eggs. Um, how long will that those eggs last? Uh, I don't know how to check outside of this menu, to be completely honest. Eh, normally it'll say in consume time, but because I am so, so picky about my food, I'm an elf that won't even check the expiration date. We have the core essentials. We have food. We have water. We have a goal if we check our map again. We have this police station to the southeast. Some place that we could potentially hole up in. Some place we could possibly go to. 
in order to to find safety. So we're gonna say it's solace in the fact that we have goals and that's we will soon be able to do something with our life. So for the rest of this first night, I, I should say the rest of this first day, because it's only 10 a.m. We did all of that within the first few hours here. We are going to gather up our books and we're going to study. Just trying to ignore the chaos around us. And hope that some of these books are going to have useful enough things in them. There we go. Useful enough things in them that we can learn something to possibly survive. A full face motorcycle helmet. That would actually be probably pretty good defense. Problem is that I'm a fancy elf. I don't want to wear a helmet. Especially a motorcycle helmet. Like one of these earth motorcycle helmets? No, thank you. We'll drop all of our books in here. The Scroll of Hardened Earth. Oh, again, ignore the shouting. Just ignore the shouting. And um, we're going to read the Scroll of Hardened Earth. It would teach us the spell Hardened Earth, which is an Earth Shaper spell. Well, so how with Magicraft works is that there are uh, eight schools that you can align yourself to. And each of the schools, is it eight or is it six? I don't remember, but there's schools that you can align yourself to. And each one of them has an opposite school. Whenever you learn one of them, um, you cannot learn the other. So if I were to learn an Earth Shaper spell here, I would be locked out from its opposite. Um, however, I already know ahead of time that uh, Earth Shaper is one of the schools that I would be very interested in. Eventually, it'll allow me to make some really interesting tools. And the opposite of Earth Shaper, I think, is Technomancer, which is eh, it's human technology thing. So we're going to go ahead and read this book again. Trying our best to uh, ignore what's going on outside, all of the shrouding and screaming. I just, I just really hope that um, oh, some smoke got in our eyes. I uh, really hope that that golem can take care of it. So here we go. Learning this spell will make you an Earth Shaper. Earth Shapers have allowed their minds to sink deep, sink deep within the stones and metals of the planet and become one with its secrets. To a master earth shaper, spells can be as permanent as the stones they are created from, and time is measured in geological eras. But it'll lock me out of Technomancer. Technomancers are the new breed of modern magicians, blending their arcane might with their advanced knowledge of the fundamental nature of the universe. They use technology to enhance their magic and vice versa. I have no interest in being a Technomancer because I'm a fancy magic elf that wants to be an orc mage. Technomancy is more of like charging cell phones and like, you know, doing stupid shit like that. It's beneath me. So we're going to go ahead and learn Harden Earth. That'll add to our spell list here. Giving us the ability to compress dirt together so hard it becomes hard as rock. A great way to turn makeshift barricades into a fortress. That is a good thing to hold on for later. Go ahead. I accidentally keep having this mana crystal in my inventory. We're going to go ahead and drop that again. And we have a bunch of mana crystals. That's actually super useful. We can use those mana crystals to make a staff. Um... I don't know if we have the recipe. We do have some recipes, but we don't have the staff recipe yet. Eventually, we'll be able to learn how to make a staff, and the staff will be a really good uh, thing for us going forward. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, read through all these books, and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, here we go. So it looks like we have a spell book here, that spell scroll that we don't need. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of skill books along the center here. We can, we can learn some computing, piercing weapons, applied science, mechanics, electronics, and then in yellow here are some books of skills that we already have, but we could read them for fun um, if, we, if we needed to. Um, and then below that are books that are just completely useless to us and some books that we don't have the abilities to know yet, including one that's really interesting to me. Metaphysics, Metaphysics 3, not always so, practicing the true spirit of Zen. That's interesting because Metaphysics is the skill tied to psychic powers. And ever since the Cataclysm, we did have a few minor psychic powers, our ability to create light and our ability to blink around, which will become very handy, but without 
further teaching or some sort of relic, we're not going to ever actually be able to improve those skills. They'll kind of just be weird tricks that we can do. We might get insight into how to increase them, but we're going to need something else to actually do so. Um, as it stands, the only ones here that really super interest me are um, applied science and honestly just applied science. Mechanics, electronics, and computers, those will be useful later. But uh, before all of that, we are probably going to take a good amount of time here and learn this book that our master, let's say, left behind for us. Translocate self. This allows us to translocate ourselves back to the attuned gate. I'm very excited to learn this because if possible, it means that we can use this space not only as a launching point, but we can then teleport back to it in the future. While we're reading, we hear nothing but screams. People screaming at each other, yelling about meat and eating. <sighs> the world outside has become truly different and very dangerous. While we're reading, I'm noticing that we are currently overweight. So we do want to check before we go out at nighttime, which will fall around 8 p.m. at night. We do want to go out and check um, what we're carrying to make sure that we're carrying as little as possible. Because so we're going to need to be able to run away from things. But we did learn Translocate Self. And it is too difficult for us to cast. That's not actually a problem. Because what you can do with this is, if I wanted to, we're not going to do this fully, but we can go back into this book and we can study for, let's say, 30 minutes. Heard a whiz. That kind of sounds like someone shot a gun up there. And we can learn some experience. It will take a lot of reading in order to get this to a higher level. But with a level 15 difficulty spell, um, it does mean that I will be able to um, eventually get this going. So we're going to go ahead and put these books all back. And we will train more on that later. Oh my gosh, was my audio input broken that whole time? Oh my gosh. Well, that really fucking sucks. I'll have to explain a lot of that again. When what? When did that break? When's the last time you guys heard me? Oh, that's really bad. Yeah, I've been talking this whole time. I just looked over at my uh, stream here. Like 10 seconds ago. Seems like it broke when you swap back the chat. Okay, you could hear me the whole time. Thank goodness. I'm glad that you guys would have notified me if... um. So I bet there's a key bind that I bumped there. I'll have to keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah, but I was just asking chat um, whenever he's referring to the uh, the metal door. Is this not the metal door that you were referring to? Or is there another metal door that I'm missing somewhere here? Because this was a secret door. There is There was a switch here which opened this door and led to the back area. But if there's another secret in this room, that means I've never found it. I have actually done this start before, and I've done this um, room before, but I've never found another secret beyond that one. I'm really glad that I didn't just screw up my entire recording because that would really suck. Uh, I did explain the safe thing. Um, I paused to explain the safe thing. And apparently my pause button might be bound to disabling audio input. So what I was explaining with safe is that um, basically how it works, Cat, is that um, safe mode actually means 
that um, it, detects, it detects if there's any hostiles nearby. So a use for it would be if I turn on safe mode and I wanted to run a long distance, as soon as it sees one hostile creature, it's going to stop me from making any more input until I turn safe mode off. I have to manually turn it off. It'll stop me from moving. It'll stop me from running, that kind of stuff. And it really helps if you're traveling long distances. Metal wall has zero coverage. So there's another metal wall is, your, is what you're saying. Okay. I'm going to take a moment outside of the recording here and see if I can find that. The, the, the coverage thing is actually pretty interesting. I never knew that you could use the cover, the coverage. Oh, 0% coverage right there. Nice. That's very cool. Okay. I am going to go back to recording then. So... That does mean that like you guys you guys got what got everything up until then. That's that's <laughs> that's really good because if I had just lost a whole bunch of stuff there, recording wise, that would have been very frustrating. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna hit sort all. Oh, it'll take care of that for me. It doesn't know what to do with mana crystals, so we're gonna move the mana crystals manually. But I'm only gonna be recording for a little bit longer here. Um, I want to try to cinch up this first episode and then. Do a little bit of editing before the night's too too late. Um, so let me go ahead and finish up here. We'll we'll hit that metal wall um, in the next uh, episode. Um, I'll probably hit it up at the beginning of the next episode. Um, thank you for letting me know it's there though. It being only five p.m. at night after all of our reading does mean that, realistically speaking, we should try our best. Extinguish our fire, eat a little bit of the meat and or food that we've managed to get, and see if we can catch even a moment of rest before our nighttime excursion. We've been up all day. So we're going to save and lay down and hope. With all of this screaming, I really doubt it, because this is one of the reasons why I'm worried about all this screaming, is that we can get a few hours of sleep before we have to get up. Yeah, look at that. They're just screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming. And even if I did fall asleep, they'd probably immediately wake me up. Just toss and turn, trying to lay in bed. This might be a higher priority for us than getting to the police station. We're going to stop trying to sleep. So it says that they're south and below of us. If we zoom out far enough, can we see where that sound's coming from? What the hell? So much screaming. The fuck is that? And it's below us? What the hell? I don't even know what that is. But it does mean that we're not going to be able to sleep here. They're going to keep us up all night. We're going to eat more of our food. Make sure that we're nice and uh, settled. And uh, let's hope to God there's not some sort of secret lab over there or something like that. Because we're not going to be able to handle it if, it if it if it is. Some of these places I've heard do actually have like secret laboratories. We're going to go ahead and drop as much stuff as we can. Whatever we don't need. Why do we have even more mana crystals on us? We should, if these things are like breeding in my inventory. What the hell? We don't need the batteries. Um, we don't need the gallon jug of clean water. We will try. Now nah, we'll keep it on us just in case we get trapped. Um, and we do want to grab some of our food. Um, that's not that heavy, so we'll gra grab the jar of jam. And then where did our, where did our staff go to? It's the only thing we have as a weapon. It's not a great weapon. But at least it is a staff. There we go. Yeah, south does mean that it would be south of us. Um, and I agree, Josh. It's it's probably a lab. 
because of the fact that it's it's that like chaotic screaming of a feral. But if it's a subway, honestly, I wish it was a subway. With this screaming beneath our house, we only have two options, really. We can either get to this police station as soon as possible and see if we can secure it. I'm really hoping we can. I'm hoping that there's some sort of lockdown or something. But it's a long walk. We're going to go ahead and mark our path. Or the game won't let me mark the path right now. Okay, sure. Normally you can press Shift W to, uh, to do that, but it's not letting me. So we'll go ahead and just figure it out ourselves. With the subway so close, there is a chance that the subway system runs under this house. And there's just monsters in the subway screaming. But it doesn't mean that we can't sleep here. Nighttime is our ally. But we do have to worry. As an academy mage, we know about golems. Their vision range is enormous. We have our elven eyes. And we have a long way that we can see. But golems will be able to see us from even that even that amount of distance. Uh, no? What are you doing? There we go. Can't climb because you really need a quarter staff. Um, yeah, we'll drop it, I guess. Can we pick it up? We can. See? Even if... I thought that was a zombie. I literally thought that was a zombie. It was a bush. Okay. We're going to zoom out a little bit and see about moving down the street here. We're going to move down the center of the street. Hoping that this gives us enough room to move if something comes up. Some corpses. What is it? Corpse of a petrified person. Poor person was just staring at the stars or something. A cataclysm took their brain from them. Took their sentiment. And eventually they just get eaten by the horde. We probably should have checked this car back there. See if it was working. Is that a bicycle? I think that is a bicycle. Oh, it's destroyed, though. It is absolutely destroyed. Okay. Let's leave it. It's not that far. Just keep moving down the street. And hopefully, we don't run into anything. In fact, I'm going to turn on safe mode. Safe mode is a mode where uh, if something enters our cone of vision here, it will stop me from moving immediately. I won't be able to press anything until I manually turn safe mode back off. Which means that we can kind of run in the dark here. I can hold down, move, and move a lot faster. See? There we go. Zombie. Eight tiles to the south. We're going to go ahead and turn off safe mode. And as long as we stay pretty far away from him... Oh, there's a zombie runner there. That's a problem. Can't see us yet. But if he gets wind of us, we'll be in trouble. Okay, we're going to go to the north then. What is this? This is sand and dirt in a volleyball court. Skirt by those runners. Oh, that's another runner. Yeah. N recently risen body moves quickly, darting its head back and forth, gnawing at its hands. If that thing gets to sight of us, we will not be able to run from it. We will have to turn and fight. And with how many zombies are here, we might have to resort to our magic, our very loud magic. But it looks like for now, we got through, through to that group. What are those? We have a zombie soldier. Once a soldier, it's dressed head to toe in combat gears and carries itself rather steadily for a zombie. We also have a decayed zombie, a once dead human corpse. Its discolored, swollen flesh is riddled with festering wounds and open sores. And then just a generic zombie down here. That's another indication of the oddness of this particular outbreak. A Z9. Zombified version of one of the German shepherd dogs used for law enforcement. Its deformed body is encased in a protected Kevlar harness. Well, that's not good. It means that's a really fucking fast zombie that's armored. Let's avoid that like the plague. Okay, we still need to get one block over before we can make south for the uh, police station. But as I was saying, that's another indication of what's going on here. Is that these zombies, they're not a disease. It's almost like they're living again. The corpses are reanimating. Whatever it is, from our experience of magic, we know this isn't necromancy. This is something else. Okay. From here, I think we're going to head south. Hopefully we can get past 
the hordes. Oh, geez. Something going on here. Four runners clustered around a zombie. Oh, man, there's a corpse there. A messenger bag. Clean pair of polka dot stockings and a sweater. I think they just tore, tore something to shreds. They're ravenous, though. Another group. Some fat zombies and decayed zombies. And another set of fresh remains. While we're standing here, we'll check the car real quick. Uh, the car doesn't have a fuel tank. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Don't worry about that UI. The car UI is uh, kind of crazy. And hard to deal with. We're almost there. Almost at the police station. Hopefully, it's a safe place to hole up. And then all we have to do is go back and go for our stuff that we got. Oh, but we hear so much movement. Please don't tell me it is. That's the station. And it's filled with movement. It's filled with zombies. I don't know if this is going to be worth taking out. But that's where we're going to have to leave you. This has been Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead. The Journey of Vellum. I have been Arima. If you guys are more interested in this series, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It will greatly help keep me motivated and keep the channel and the series going. I'm hoping to do some episodes of this several times a week, possibly once a day. We'll see how long it takes to edit, but look forward to more of it coming very soon. If you're interested in what mods I'm using and in Cataclysm in general and possibly are looking to either play along or just play it yourself, check out the Discord in the link in the description of the video. I will have a section of my Discord dedicated entirely to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. I wish I could just go over it here, but this game is incredibly complicated and it would take a very long time. So as it stands, I am going to be referring to the Discord in order to uh, uh, pass on that information. If someone knows of a better way for me to record that information easier, feel free to leave a comment in, in, in uh, the comment section below. As it stands, this is where we'll have to stop for today. Next time, we'll pick up with trying to figure out if we can get into this police station, seeing if this is a true home or not, and seeing what comes for Vellum next. I've been Arima. Goodbye. Okay, well, I'm done with the recording session. I am actually going to save and quit right here. Um, thanks for the people who uh, checked out the stream, who uh, uh, were poking around. I will be post posting a video of my beginnings of the uh, Cataclysm series uh, tomorrow, uh, hopefully. <laughs> I really hope I can finish tonight um, to post it by tomorrow. Um, but uh, we're going to go ahead and end for here so that I can sit down and start doing editing and stuff like that. Um, thanks for keeping me company. Um, I appreciate Kat um, asking questions, to be honest, because uh, it gives me some idea of things that I need to cover. I hopefully can work it in naturally and stuff. And um, I don't think I've ever seen you in my streams before, Josh Troll. So uh, thanks for jumping in. I hope you guys all have a good night. Goodbye.